All right, hey, what's up everybody? Gratuitous here in this FL Studio tutorial. I'm gonna be teaching you about arpeggios and how to use arpeggios in FL Studio. There is a lot of different ways you can approach arpeggios. So for example, this is what it would sound like. Okay, let's get into the tutorial. I'll break it down, show you how it all works. Are you looking for an easy way to learn how to actually make beats with FL Studio? Check out my FL Studio beginners book. Just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash beginner. All right, so there is multiple ways to do arpeggios in FL Studio, but first, what is an arpeggio? An arpeggio is also known as a broken chord. When we talk about normal chords, those are called block chords. So if we play a chord, we are playing three or more notes and that's a block chord. A broken chord or an arpeggio is we are actually playing that chord in single notes. Okay, so instead of that's a block chord, that's a broken chord, okay? So in FL Studio, the most common way we'll see in tutorials is uh, here's the arpeggiator section. You can click up, down, up, down. And in order to use this arpeggiator, you have to use more than one note. So if I press one note, now I press two notes. Okay. Also, that is dictated off of the tempo. So if your tempo is fast, your arpeggio is much faster. If we go down slower, arpeggio is slower. But depending on the tempo, you can also come here to the time and you can set that. I will cover these quickly though, and then we'll go back and we'll cover them a little bit more in depth. Okay, so that's one way to do arpeggios. You click here, you click into the cog or the detailed settings. It's in the arpeggiator. Another one is in flex. Depending on the preset you choose, you can see that it has a little option right here. Not all presets have the arpeggiator built in, but you can hear if I play chords. If I disable that. With it enabled though, again, not all, not all patches have it. Now, another way to do it in FL Studio is in the piano roll. As you can see, this is a very, very powerful chord progression. This is in C major, and I'll just play it quickly. Sorry, that is because the arpeggiator is on. So let's just play our normal block chords, which is three or more notes per chord. Okay, now uh, the keyboard shortcut is Alt and A, and you can see this little arpeggiator menu pops up. You can also access it by going to the menu. You go to Tools, and you're gonna to go to Arpeggiate. Now there is tons of different built-in tools in FL Studio. FL Studio is so phenomenal for quick creativity when it comes to all these tools. We're gonna to focus on the arpeggiator in this one. Um, and so this is where you can get really, really complex in your notes. And the benefit of doing it this way is it actually hard kind of codes it into your piano roll. Whereas in the other way I showed you, um, you have to just hold down your notes and it will play it based off of your notes, which we'll cover in just a moment. But you can see this is the arpeggiator. You can flip it. You can do all the different stuff. You can adjust your uh, timing. So for example, if I hit play, that is one thing to say. You can hit play as you're adjusting this. So obviously if you go too fast, but what I do want to say is right here, if it's going, you know, let's say right here, you can adjust your gate and your gate is going to allow you to adjust the tails. And that's really important depending on the style of sound you're working with. So all the way, whereas if we uh, bring it all the way up, we go a little faster. Okay, so depending on the tempo. And one last one I'll share with you quickly is if you have third-party plugins, sometimes they have arpeggiators built in. So this is Nexus, this is the arpeggiator, so this is just normal chords. If we enable that, now, in this case, very, very slow, so we could speed that up. We make it a little faster. So that is a couple different ways you can do arpeggios in FL Studio. We will quickly cover each of those just a little bit faster, and I'll share with you how to set it up, okay? So let's go into something. Let's say we open up Flex. By default, this one does not have the built-in arpeggiator, and it sounds like this. This is a pad. Let's turn it into an arpeggio. And I already created an example. So for example, this is what it could sound like. That's the same preset. And as you can see in the detailed settings, the gear cog, come down to the arpeggiator and this is my settings. This is what I did. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit more. We will come to this one where it's just a pad. You click up here, you go into the arpeggiator, you just enable it. Let's listen. So you can hear that um, 
we can't really make out those notes. Like if I come back to the other one, so again I have the exact same version, but this one is an arpeggiated one. And I've kind of accentuated those um, those notes because it sounds more musical, whereas this would not cut through in a mix. Okay, so what I did was I just brought back the gate, and the gate is how tight those notes are. You can see that, because this is a pad, um, on the, on the volume envelope, I brought it back. So I'll let you listen. I'll, I'll keep playing the note. Okay, do you hear how much louder and, qu and quicker it's sounding? One thing to test here is if we turn off the reverb. That's telling me it's not the reverb. That's telling me that we have too long of a release for what I'm wanting it for. So now we're getting closer to what we had. Now, how the arpeggiator works is again, you can go up, you can go down, you can go up, down, you can play with all this stuff. In this case, I'm just uh, selecting up. You can right click this and you can set it to uh, a step. I would suggest always setting it to a step. Otherwise, your arpeggio will be out of sync with your music. Um, you could always automate this too within your track if you wanted to to get creative. So I would highlight this. We're going to come to here. You can right click this. You can go create automation clip. What we'll do is we'll copy this value. We'll paste in that value. And you can see it's automating right here. So now we have the gate. So the gate is now the, the notes are fully open. They're longer sounding. We bring back the gate. It's tighter. We have a range. And so what that's doing, it's just essentially allowing the arpeggio to go up an actual octave. If I just go range one. Now, in order to play the arpeggio, you have to play more than one note. If I go to like range two, if I play uh, two notes now, all right, so if I go range one, we're not going to get the C5 and the G5. It's just going to stay down here in the C4. See, so it's just going to go up and down. All right, and so you also have the repeat as well. And uh, again, we can hop over here. So this is like the arpeggiator section. Again, you guys can always hit F1. It brings you here and it'll break down, you know, what like uh, what, what the range does, what the repeat does. And uh, for this chord section, um, I would recommend just leaving it on the auto chord. And you can also enable the slide if you want to be creative with it. This one doesn't really suit that. Um, but when I was playing around with this on my own, the FL keys, if I enable the slide, it sounded pretty powerful. Um, no arpeggio was on, so. Very, very powerful, right? That's because of the slides on. Otherwise, it would sound like this. Slide on. So arpeggios, when you learn to use them, super, super powerful in FL Studio. Um, okay, so that's a walkthrough of how to use the arpeggiator section. Um, like I said, sometimes in Flex, they have the arpeggio built into the preset. Okay, if you want, you can disable it. Um, but I don't think there's any way to control that. That's kind of like a built-in one if you want to use it, and you can disable it if you don't. We then took these notes. I just press Control C, Control V, and then we brought it into our own preset here. You know, that was a pad. It was a very, very beautiful pad. I liked it. And then I wanted to turn it into an arpeggio. And in this case, in order to make those uh, notes kind of pop out a little bit more. So again, we will uh, remove this. We will come here. And because we have... Um, init song with this position. So we'll just delete the initial value and we'll put this to like one. So it sounds like this. So it slides on. See slide didn't sound very good with this sound, but it sounded really good with the piano. The gate might be a little too, uh, too tight. Again, you also can come here. You can come here to the tools. You go to the arpeggiate. So this arpeggiator tool is like the other arpeggiator tool built into the channel sampler, except this tool it just allows you to see visually it also kind of hard codes your notes into the piano roll so you can edit them afterwards and stuff which is really powerful and i'll just kind of break down quickly how it works um, you can select different patterns if you want like you can select different stuff and it'll do stuff for you which is really really powerful i'll just hit reset to go back to what i have um, here you can, can like kind of flip it you can go alternate and again you can always hit play as we listen to these So here it is, you know, just like the normal one. We can do the range, which is gonna put it over two octaves. Okay. Um, you can try all different things in here. And again, this is where FL Studio really shines, like with all these built-in kind of tools. 
Now, here is the gate, and I want you to visually see, so you can see all the, all the notes, right? And uh, we can bring it back just a little bit. And then your time, you can play with this. If it goes too fast, it can sound weird in the song. And so there you guys go. So that is how you, you can create arpeggios in FL Studio. Now, when it comes to your MIDI keyboard, a lot of times your MIDI keyboard nowadays might have like built-in arpeggiators and stuff. I kind of avoid that. I like to just do everything in FL Studio. It gives you the most flexibility. So if you have any questions about learning FL Studio, check out my website, it's gratuitous.com. I'm a recognized FL Studio trainer. You guys can also check out my FL Studio beginners book and my beginners course by going to itsgratuitous.com forward slash beginner. And if you'd like to stay updated with the website, check out my podcast. It's called Music Production Made Simple. It's all about learning FL Studio and how to see results, stay organized to enjoy your music making for the long term. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Again, visit me over at itsgratuitous.com.